Welcome to the Subconscious Mind Mastery Podcast. I'm Thomas Miller coming to you from Orlando, Florida with Fred Dodson. We have just completed what I think is one of the highest energy things you may have ever done. The Reality Creation 2022. The only thing you didn't do was have it on 2 22 <laughs> But this was the right time to have it. And it has been an amazing group of 50 people from literally all over the world. There have been a number of comments about the diversity of this group, which, of course, is one of the main themes in the world right now, energetically and, say, politically. And you guys have represented that just amazingly and beautifully. So the thing I wanted to ask you, obviously, a lot of people have listened to the episodes that we just did about you're escaping the tyranny, basically, of where you were living, the lockdowns, the constraint, the mandates, etc. And now you look out at this. What has this meant to you to be able to do this in freedom again? I think it's uh, quite a statement to meet up uh, without masks and uh, without social distancing and without a single person getting a cold. Because I read in the newspaper in New Zealand that Florida is raging with uh, COVID and Omicron and whatnot, right? It's raging here. People are falling dead on the street. That's what you read in the news. And it's a beautiful slap in the face of these people to do this in spite of that and to show them, well, we create our own reality and our reality is that we're healthy and our reality is that we're well. Everybody here is well. All the 50 people were well. We got we got it all here. The diversity was unlike I've ever seen. Actually, we had the Muslims, the Christians, the Jews, the atheists, the New Agers, I say. Okay, we had them all. We had them all. Uh, beautiful. And that's all a, a reflection of me. So that's a slap in the face of this, this whole thing. And I want people to see it and be like, oh, look at what they're doing. Why don't we do that here? That's the whole point, you know? If they can do it, why can't we do it? Can we maybe meet again? So setting an example of what is possible, setting an example that this is possible and it's possible to stay healthy. I knew that beforehand, but you know, some people were like, oh, you're a, that's dangerous. Literally, I had people telling me what you're doing is dangerous, you know? There's nothing dangerous about meeting up. I've done it my whole life. Why in the last two years has it become dangerous to meet up? We're just meeting up, having a good time, okay? It's not dangerous. Look, we're doing it. It's amazing to me that today you have to prove that you can meet up, okay? I got to prove it. Now I've proven I can, I can meet people. And that's good. That's quite the statement. I'm, I'm very happy to have made that statement. Um, this, every single person is so badass, okay? These are badass people. They really are. Um, amazing people. Who does that in the middle of a raging pandemic, right? <laughs> Uh, and World War III on top of it, to just show up here and act like all is well. Who does that? Uh, total lunatics. <laughs> lunatic, <yeah>. somebody said. <laughs> total lunatics. I mean, wow. So I, I want to do, do more of this, really. I think just meeting up would be a statement <laughs> without the, all the rest, right? Tennis lessons. You could do tennis lessons, <laughs> right? Could, yeah, You I could, could do, do group tennis lessons. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well... We, we we thought that we had to do Zoom, right, for two years. We thought that we had to seclude, and we thought that we had to do this online. And now you've been in the energy as the leader of 50 souls combined around one common goal. Can you describe the difference in the energy of this versus Zoom? First of all, the energy of this versus previous uh, courses, can you tell? Yes. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yes. Wow. I've done so many courses. For me, this was crazy because of what's happened to me in the last two years. Well, that's the deal. Scarcity creates this. Yeah. If any of you have questions, throw your hand up so we can get the mic to you. Hi. I dream a lot about living other lives while I'm sleeping, like maybe living the life of someone else from birth to death and then wake up exhausted. I'm just curious, what would the purpose of that be? in this lifetime or why might a reason for that happen um can you say it again please sure so i dream of living like going to sleep and living a life like in a small 
community, knowing everybody yeah. in the community it's, my it's, whole life and dying, it, and then waking up. Yeah, it could be a parallel life. What would the point of like having a dream like that? Is it? Is there? Well, any? it's just a life that is close to you, and it's also running, you know. And you have this. Uh, I believe you have a part of yourself that's living different lives. That's my view of it. And it's a nice exploration, actually. You can. Doesn't it feel good? Usually, I'm exhausted. Yeah. So you wake up exhausted? I wake up exhausted. Okay, so you don't want to have those, really. I wouldn't mind having them. if I Maybe if I knew I was doing it and there was a reason, I just it feels long. It's in interesting. Yeah. I, I They're have, interesting. I have no idea what the purpose would be. It depends on many, many things specific to you. You could ask yourself, to be honest, you know. I, I wouldn't know. I, I when, when it happens to me, I know, like, okay... Um, What's the opportunity, right? What, what do you think is the opportunity here? To learn a lesson? Or what? Maybe, yeah. Maybe something that maybe there's a parallel to that I'm struggling with or something here Yeah. that I can learn or maybe a block that's carrying over? Well, before you know that, you need to look more into that. And that would involve next time you dream it, right, to look, cl look more closely. If it's a recurring dream... It's, it's not recurring. It's well, if always it's not different. recurring, it doesn't matter. Oh, it's always different? Yes. A different scene from that life? No, like different lives. Different lives. Yeah, it's just uh, traveling around, really. I mean, I think it's beautiful. You say it's exhausting, but I think it's beautiful to be able to see different lives and just explore. The exhausting must be something else if you wake up exhausted. Maybe I'm just busy in the dream thinking. Who knows? I don't know. Okay. okay. I think Thank it's you. a yeah. I, th I think it's fun. Strange and fun. There's so many things happening. Okay, and I don't understand them, and I look into them, and I don't know that I learn that much, but I know it's fun. I'm having fun at night. I wake up in the morning. I tell. I always tell my wife what I dreamed. She tells me what I dreamed, and that's how our dreams get more and more intense, because we tell each other. We recount them in the morning. Do you recount your dreams? good and that's how it get, that's how you learn more and more about it right and then then we try to sometimes you only know in retrospect what it meant like the flamingo dream right uh, before this recording started when i was 25 years old i dreamt of i dreamed or i dreamt you you dreamt. had a dream okay. <laughs> You're the i had a dream of flamingos I dreamed of flamingos and meeting my soulmate uh, where there's flamingos. And then that was when I was 25. I'm now 48. And the scene, the exact scene from my dream occurred in real time here. And in that moment, I was so shocked because it took me back to that dream. I thought, how is it possible that I knew this when I was 25? I knew exactly where I would end up. Does that mean it's destiny for me to be here or what? must be destiny, my destiny. So that was so beautiful. And in retrospect, I understood. But often it's mysterious. Like, you don't know right now. And I don't know either, you know. But someday you might. And at your wife's suggestion, Fred had shirts made for the event. And what is on the shirt but a... Flamingo. Pink flamingo. <laughs> I now ascribe mystical qualities to it because of what happened, right? There you to go. To me, it's like the, the unicorn, the flamingo. If you could give advice to yourself, Fred, f let's say from 10 years ago, not when you were young, but maybe when you were 38, what advice would you give the 38-year-old version of you? Do not write about things in your books that only apply to that time. Write more universally. Another piece of advice is uh, it's even easier than you teach. <laughs> even easier. I had too many, my books are too wordy. And there's too many techniques. You don't need that much. Uh, in regards to your consciousness research and your study of history, where do you see 10 years' time um, the study of consciousness? Uh, this new ageism thing is going to recede. It's boring. And it's going to be more of a merging of new ageism like we have in this group literally this group is 10 years ahead religion new ageism and science a merging of those 
rather than being strictly this category and that category, a merging of categories so that you can mix anything really. And you can, when you mix things, something better comes up, a new thing that you didn't expect. There's going to be things that you did not expect. You didn't see coming. You didn't see 2020, 21 coming. Nobody saw it coming. There's going to be much more of that. Nobody's seeing it coming. There's stuff that's going to happen that is so amazing. Nobody saw it coming. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. You're going to love it. <laughs> it's also going to be uh, really intense, okay? We're coming, you can feel that in the world. Really intense times are coming. They, they've already started. They started 2020. They started even earlier than that. It's getting more and more intense. Things are getting more and more intense, right? And people have to be much more responsible now and much more awake. They have to step up their game. Everybody's got to step up their game. The world is forcing it. That's why these things are happening, to force us to awaken. The reason bad things happen is because people are fast asleep. They're oblivious, okay? And then bad things happen saying, wake up. And then they wake up, and everything's good again, and then they go back to sleep, and then things go back again. How, what, how is that saying, um, good times make people weak, weak people make hard times, hard times, hard times make them strong? Yeah. Strong people create good times. Strong people create good times. That is exactly accurate, right? And that's what's happening right now. People have become so ap apathetic. There's no surprise about what's happening at all, okay? So, yeah, whatever. You just tell me what I'm supposed to think. Tell me what I'm supposed to do. And that's got to change. That will change. It's already changing. It has changed, and so be it. A lot of people in today's New Age environment talk about 5D consciousness and these different levels coming, and all of this is ascension, et cetera. What are your thoughts on that? Is the level of energy, I always bring everything back to levels of energy, but is the level of the ener of energy of the planet rising or are we drooping right now? What's happening is indicative of it rising, even though it doesn't look that way, in my view. Totally, totally rising. Because all these problems were already there before. Now they're visible. My question is, too many times we heard about end of world. So the last time we heard that one was 2012. And they have a movie on this part too. So do you think it's going to be one day end of the world and the earth and planet? No more? I kept telling people in my seminars, nothing's going to happen 2012. I kept trying to tell them they wouldn't believe me. I said, nothing's going to happen. You know, maybe something did happen and we went on a parallel timeline. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe the world ended in 2012 and we're just uh, living our lives in some, <laughs> in some afterlife, you know? <laughs> so never end, okay. Um, it, things will never end. Question is in which form they continue. So related to the answer you gave um, before in regards to what's about to come, is anything related with an alien contact? I don't know. <laughs> Are aliens controlling any of this? Are alien going to come at some point and make contact? That's a complex contact? question. That's too complicated, really, because, you know, there could be like a fake aliens, fake invasion, and there could be real aliens that are doing the fake aliens. It's very complicated. Um, there's aliens for sure. I just don't know whether they're going to appear. I really don't know. It's, it's very mixed up discernment what's a fake alien what's a real alien it's so easy to tell when 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 there's fakery about you just gotta be intuitive you are very intuitive you'll have no problem the group here will have no problem whatsoever telling the difference okay just know that there's so much fakery going on you gotta relax always relax whatever happens relax if there's a bunch of flying saucers above you relax <laughs> It might, might be a projection, it might be fake, okay? First thing is always relax, and then judge. Don't prejudge. Whatever happens, relax. We'll see. We'll see. I'm always like, we'll see what happens, right? People are always like, this disaster is happening, this is happening, and I'm like, we'll see what happens, we'll see, right? This is going to happen, we'll see. Most of what they say is going to happen doesn't actually happen, right? Uh, 
most of you are still alive, regardless of whether you're vaxxed or not, you're still alive. So none of, all of this was garbage. If you vax, you're going to die. If you don't vax, you're going to die. All of it garbage. You're alive, you're well, you're conscious. Okay? Very controversial to say that because the anti-vaxxers would be like, yeah, but Fred, and the pro-vaxxers, but Fred, shut up, you're alive, you're well. Okay? They, they, all this propaganda, it's both sides giving you constant propaganda, ignore it all, look inside, intuition. Aliens, who cares, really? Um, aliens are aliens, you know? If you want to talk to aliens, ask them yourself. Um, meditate on aliens and say, I want to talk to you, and you'll talk to them. Why do we have such trouble relaxing into that, like what you just described? Why because, do we have to you, amp it up? Because you read uh, the Twitter feed. <laughs> But I mean society, yeah. people, humans. You read the trending topics. That's why. Yeah. Why do you read the trending topics? You want to know what's going on. That's not what's going on. What's going on is here, right? In your life, your success. Focus on your success, your vision for the world, yours. That's not what's going on. This is what's going on. Like Oprah said, that was a tweetable, folks. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly the problem. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the opportunity, Fred and Thomas. Thomas, you talked about the ascension, the 5D, that whole thing. And the first time I ever heard about that was with Dolores Cannon, since I've been following her for a while. And Fred, then I saw you post something about Dolores Cannon. May I ask what specifically caused you to appreciate Dolores Cannon? Or in She's just so far out there, so crazy. I like that. I appreciate madness craziest books I've ever read, like so far out. Um, I, I don't necessarily think it's practical, but it's fun, you know. It's not practical to me, but I, I enjoy reading it. It's a lot of fun. And isn't it all about fun? Dolores Cannon is fun, fun to read. Let's take a couple more, and then we'll switch to what you guys got out of this weekend. Yes. Okay, so why don't you create like a hotel or resort for highly intuitive or like people who just like to live life and enjoy? Because I don't want to create a cult. I always, um, I'm never going to do that because all these uh, things, I've, I've researched this. They all start well with good intentions and group consciousness, collective, collectivism eventually leads to weird shit, you know? So I prefer individuality, um, individualism, and not escaping from the world, but being in it, being in the world, but not of it. Um, not escaping from normal people, but you know, being with them. They need us the most. If we just go to a retreat you know, and get away from the world, that's not our purpose, to just be away from the world, in my view. So I just want to be with normal people and help where I am and not escape to some island, elite island, you know, because that's literally what the elite do. That's exactly how they think. And I understand why they think that. They just escape to some island and do whatever they want. But that's not really affecting any change, right? If I had that mentality, I wouldn't be giving this course. I don't have to give this course financially. I'm well off. I'm done, right, financially, because of my books. But nonetheless, I go into the world and meet real people to effect change. I don't escape onto some island. Well, you did for a while, but you're back now. Yeah, I'm back. <laughs> go ahead. I have two questions. First of all, what's your... I know your opinion on cryptocurrency has changed over time. What is your take on cryptocurrency right now? I know you're accepting cryptocurrency, but... Um, I am accepting of cryptocurrency. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so what do you think is going to happen? And then the second question is, just to reflect on your um, latest, one of the latest posts about the history of San Francisco, uh, do you believe that our current map or the globe has been modified? You know my book, Parallel Universes of Self, where mm -hmm. you change history? Yeah. That's kind of what I'm doing on a grand scale. I'm experimenting with uh, 
changing my view of history and going on another timeline where history is fake. And I'm doing that for fun, for my personal enjoyment. <laughs> People don't know that. They think uh, I'm a conspiracy theorist. I'm just doing it to experiment mentally whether I can change my view of everything, like a totally different context, right? Like, suppose everything I ever learned is false. Everything is totally, oh, that is so much fun. Okay, because that changes my current reality and I get into a different vibration and I feel something else. It takes me to a higher level of consciousness at your expense. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, but yeah. <laughs> Thank it's, you. A, it's a beautiful experiment to ask questions, to question everything. That's fun. You want fun? Then question everything. Everything, everything. And you get become a nut job like me. Should we pay attention to our dreams? I think so. In like my opinion, how? it's good to look at your dreams. Like if they're just like ordinary or if I don't even remember my dreams when I well, wake up. Well, if they're ordinary, never mind. They're not that important, but it's right. good to, you just know. Just get the feeling sometimes. Well, to recount what happened at night. Like there's something happened at night. Before it fades away, by the time you go to the shower or whatever, it's faded away. But before that happens, why not have a look? Like what's going on here? Right? Why am I dreaming this? What does it mean to me? Ask yourself. Yeah, not only about dreams, but about everything that happens. Does this have a meaning? Yeah. Right? Why is this happening to me again? Why is this dream happening to me? Why is this person in my life? Not in a negative way, playfully. Okay? People take this stuff too seriously. Why is this happening? No. Right. Because no, well, nothing is yeah. a coincidence, like yeah, you said. Yeah, right. What's going on? Looking deeper. What's really going on here? But for real now, what's what? Yeah. Okay. Dreams. Uh, okay, just one more thing. Uh, if somebody comes to you who's like absolute beginner and like complete layman and asks you, what do you coach and what are you teaching? And you have just one minute or you just want to give a short answer. What would you say? What I teach? Yeah, to that person who's I, a layman. I'm just a success coach. That's it. That's <laughs> what I say. I coach success. Okay. What would okay? What would you say you teach about life, or about uh? Well, generally, the things you focus on in life—that's what you get. <laughs> okay. To lay people, right? Yeah. And everybody understands that. Everybody. Right. You yeah. gotta speak, so that everybody understands. There's universal truths that everybody understands. Right? Everybody understands what you focus on, you tend to get. Uh, oh, yeah, I have an example of that. Uh, yeah, so anybody understands that. Not everybody understands parallel universes, yeah, you yeah, know. Exactly. Don't yeah, even get started. Yeah, yeah. If you had a real heart touch moment this weekend, would you share? Hi, um, my name's Lexi. Um, I came here, um, I'm so grateful. Um, because um, I always don't think uh, I'm a special person and uh, I work a lot and but I really into spiritual stuff then um, my friend actually encouraged me to just go for it because he really into it then I just came here um, so I'm actually not like a very outgoing person I'm I don't feel like I'm a leader and it, uh, when she gave me the basket today I'm the and tell me, I so appreciate it. I set up the uh, WhatsApp group, and uh, I feels like you know, I have this ability. Is is this energy? Um, this um, uh, group give me that courage to let me actually to be my truly self and to show myself. And uh, this is the first thing I wanna uh, say. And the second is, I think receive this basket. Let me realize. Why I always feel like earning money is so difficult for me because I am always the person, I kind of feel like, okay, if I go out, I pay or it's, uh, it's okay. But if somebody like pay for me, like maybe another day, I forgot my wallet, she just like offered pay for me. I feel like, I feel happy, but I feel like I'm guilt about it. I need uh, like pay it back because I don't know how to actually accept like this 
money come to me, this uh, appreciation. I realized this money, of course, it helped me because I want to improve myself so much and uh, I need to skip my word to come here. Then I got this money to support me to get more um, self-improvement. Also, um, it tells me I learned to receive money, don't feel like guilt. I should accept, you know, people give me money and uh, I can ask for it. I accept people or universe give me um, uh, money or anything and I deserve it. Thank yep. you so much. I Excellent. really appreciate it. Thank you. Take the money because there's an abundance of it. Take it. Not only giving. Take the money. Take everything. Take it. Take lots and lots of money and give it and take it and give it and take it. There's an abundance of everything. The first time I started reading your book, you, sa you said, just take one of this method and stick with it. Don't read anything else. But not until the seminar that I felt it deep inside me that this is all I need. I'm not, I'm not going to read any other books. I'm just going to come back and throw them away or donate or whatever. But I spent these three days in this period of bringing her up in this period of reality creation. So this is my goal is to not only achieve my goals, but to make sure that she gets it. She knows who she is and remembers it for the rest of her life. Thank you. Thank you. You know, I love that, I think, more than anything, because that will carry it on after we're gone, you know? Yes. That's just really cool. I love seeing the kids. I love conscious families. Yeah. And your husband, is that your husband? He wants to be more calm, okay? And he less triggered in your presence. And he wants to react in a different way, all right? He's got good intentions. It's a great family right there. Awesome. So be it. Yeah. Ali, meet yes, Ali. Sir. Thank you so much. Say hi to Facebook. Hi, everyone. <laughs> um, I have three kids. They are 13, 10, and 8. So my question is, they are like still kids. They can't understand what I'm saying. But what is the best way to start with this age to make them a better version early in their life? Well, uh they learn by example, your example. So you, if you're the best version of you, they learn so much from that, from who you are, naturally, naturally. Also, less screen time, more imagination, more book reading, lots and lots of book reading, imagination, less, because uh, as I said, television and this supplants the imagination, replaces it. And that makes a person less powerful uh, in their ability to create. So that's a great, just that would make excellent kids. Just that alone, being a good example and training their imagination. Okay, let's start there. Uh, but you need to give them space too. Like um, people are always like, show me the training methods. Give them space. Give them space to be who they are. Okay? and guide them gently, gentle guidance by showing them, showing them, not telling them, showing them what it's like to, to be a good example in things, right? They copy you, they copy you. So if you're a stupid example, you're walking across the red light, they see it, they copy it. So whatever you are, um, they will copy it. If, on the other hand, you try to teach them to be like that, it doesn't work as good as if you actually are that and show them. So be careful what you show them. If you're having a fight with your wife, do it somewhere else. Don't show them. Show them the good life. Show them it's what you put their attention on, basically. Attention creates reality. So what do your children have their attention on all day, right? Um, you can guide that a little bit. And you can also ask them, what would you like to have your attention on? 
attention on. Well, because children's attention is chaotic, right? Attention here and here and here. And you can actually help children by helping them find something that interests them that they can put their attention into, such as a fascinating book. Because many kids can't focus attention. They're nervous, right? And people call that ADHD, and then they give them pills, which is nonsense. They force them to put their attention on something they don't want to have their attention on instead of giving them something that's nice to put your attention on. Oh, this is interesting. This is a nice project. Let's build this. Building stuff is great. Creating stuff is great with your hands, right? Uh, making stuff, getting into stuff. That's the answer. So this is the, I heard like one time that said, is the better way to to raise the kids in house to make sure that they have two things, love and they feel safe in this environment. Yes, correct. Safe, they feel safe and they have love. They, when I say give them space, it also means give them love. Space, time, give them time, space and attention and slightly guide them. What, right? about, what about electronics today? Besides uh, audio class. books, yeah, I just, besides <laughs> put I earbuds just, in there. I just said that it's too way too much external stuff, way too much. But it, there's so much peer pressure, and there's so much pressure to just plop the kids down in front of it because it's a great babysitter. Yeah, it's uh, parents are exhausted because they've been in front of screens too much. They're exhausted. Yeah, <laughs> so they put their kids in front of screens too. Okay, Susan. And then I think we'll, we're going to wrap it up here pretty quick. But I want to thank you both for an extraordinary experience. And as I said to you, Fred, um, really my number one goal was to experience you. And I was delighted by so many incredible surprises. One, by the way, was to meet you both, which I didn't expect to see you, Thomas, here. Uh, that was a nice surprise. And... I guess the biggest delight for me was how, yes, you're a teacher and I expected to receive great content as I've read many of your books and I have already been groomed by you, so to speak, but you shared so many personal stories that were vulnerable and real and honest and maybe not even comfortable for you to share. And thank you for that because the essence of Fred came through and who you really are uh, besides an incredible teacher. And Thomas, uh, both of you, it was so nice to meet you on a personal level. Sitting with you at the pool yesterday um, it was just wonderful, wonderful experience and real and got to know you as a person. So thank you. It was an extraordinary experience. Thank you both so much. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. <laughs> let's, let's do it. I'd like to do a real quick lightning round, like five people pass the mic around really fast what is a quick one or two sentence takeaway that you're going to take from here and really apply powerfully in your life? Reality is much easier to create than we know. It's for everybody. The power inside you is not outside. So this is what I can say. I'll be applying all uh, the levels uh, exercise to every part of my life. We can all do it. It's fun and it's easier than we think. And uh, we just have to focus and do and actually read all of, all of Fred's books. <laughs> Over deliver on value and everyone's happy. You can heal everyone you want, anyone you want. That's my next book title. <laughs> and now everybody knows. You can heal anyone. It's out. Attention is healing. Accept your resistance. And do some eye gazing once in a while. <laughs> know who you are. Be love. Control your attention. Control your reality. My takeaway was that I can be weird and still be successful. Mm -hmm. I love that. Yes, yes. My takeaway is that I have the answers already. And now I have the skills to be able to access and discern the answers. Man, we're getting the whole seminar right here. <laughs> Um, I just came here for the energy. It was really good energy. Wow. You know, as we wrap this up, this is what it's like to be in high energy.
It feels really, yeah, it really f- good. It feels full. Yeah, it feels <laughs> like people feel are full. really good. Sh- their faces are shining, right? And, and it, there's a fullness about it. And you were so on today, especially this morning. I mean, I haven't seen Fred like that ever. He just was so on. This was great. Was I? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so until we all see each other again. Enjoy the, the journey! journey! Thank you guys, really appreciate it. Thank you. Well done. All right, Facebook, that's it. We'll see you tonight at 8 o'clock for Healing Convergence. 8 o'clock tonight.